Hey, what's up everyone? Lecture 24. I want to talk about how heat transfers through molecular motion. So for the um, for eighth grade right now, you're finally starting to explore heat, right? And how it transfers, especially, um, or I should say how energy transfers, which is the same thing as saying as how heat transfers. Energy or heat is transferred through molecular motion. And what is really transferred through is molecular collisions, atoms or molecules colliding with each other. Okay, so molecules have to collide with one another in order for there to be an exchange in energy or an exchange of heat to be transferred from one place to another. So if I have like, if I have a cold molecule, let's just say this is cold. Cold means to you and me, cold means low molecular motion. I'm gonna say low mm. And then I have a a molecule that is hot, meaning it has high molecular motion. Okay, the only way that you're going to see, um, you, the only way you're going to see this this molecule gain some of the energy from this molecule is if there is a collision. And when they collide, the energy is conserved. Uh, let me change the colors. Uh, maybe like. Okay, when they collide, they're gonna the energy is going to be split between the two. And after many, many, many collisions, I'll just put medium. Uh, medium molecular motion. So after they collide over and over and over and over and over again, eventually they'll both have the exact same molecular motion. They'll have the exact same energy. But the only way they can do that is if they collide with each other. They have to collide. But you have to have these things called molecular collisions. And that's what's going on all the time, like in a, in a gas or a liquid or anything of that sort. There are molecules constantly bouncing up into each other and bouncing off of each other and when they do so they're either absorbing energy from each other emitting energy from each other or just exchanging energy from one from one molecule to the other so a really easy example would be to think of billiard balls on a pool table um, you guys know if you've ever played pool you set up the the triangle and then put all the balls all the pool balls in a certain configuration inside the triangle and then you have to hit the cue ball, this white ball, you have to hit it and um, transfer energy from the cue ball to all the rest of the balls in order to in order to get the game started. Okay? The only way for one ball though is to move uh, the only way one ball can move is if another ball hits it, or if you hit it with the cue ball, right? Remember in pool you can only hit that white ball, you can only hit the cue ball. So atoms and molecules literally exchange the heat in the exact same way as these pool balls do. They have to hit each other in order to exchange energy and provide motion to um, molecular motion to other pool, uh, pool balls. So let me just give you an easy example just to start off with. So let's imagine that we have a box with a hot molecule. Now when I say hot, what I mean is lots of heat, okay? I don't mean temperature hot. I guess you could think of it as temperature hot because usually if something's hot with a temperature, that means it usually has a lot of heat. So that's why I'm using hot. Okay, but when I say hot, I mean lots of molecular motion. When I say cold, I mean very little heat or very little molecular motion. Okay. So let's take a look at, um, at this example here. We have a box with a hot molecule inside of it. 
okay? And it just sits in this box. It's this perfect box that's perfectly insulated. It, these, these bo these, the walls of the box don't absorb any, any molecular motion. Okay, they're called perfect insulators. That's what scientists would call them. They're ideal. They don't exist, but we have to, we have to use um, ideal situations in order to understand certain things. So this hot molecule will just sit there and bounce around in this box forever and ever and ever and ever. Okay. It will never ever cool down. Why? Because there's nowhere for the energy to go. So it'll sit there and bounce in this box for the rest of eternity. Okay. With the exact same energy that it, that it always has. Okay. So suppose we injected a cold molecule into the box or a molecule that has very little molecular motion. What's going to happen? Well, this molecule with the very little molecular motion is just going to slowly move around inside the box and this hot molecule will zoom around the box all over the place. Now, how is heat going to be transferred between these two molecules? Well, energy is transferred through a molecular collision, through molecular motion. So the energy from this molecule will transfer to this molecule through a thing called a molecular collision. So it's going to bounce around inside the box and eventually, just like a pool, a pool ball, a billiard ball, it will eventually hit. They'll eventually collide with each other. So that's what's happening here. It gets a little closer. And then when the molecules collide, the two will separate from each other, but only after transferring some energy. And that's basically what I said right here. Energy is transferred through molecular motion. So when two molecules of different energies collide, they exchange energy with, with each other. And the one with the higher energy always, always, always gives some of its energy to the one that has less energy. Okay, it never goes the other way around. You will never see a cold molecule giving up more of its energy to a hotter molecule. It doesn't work that way. That defies the laws of thermodynamics. We've never ever seen a situation where a cold molecule gives up even more of its energy to a hot molecule. Now notice the color change here. Red hot means a lot of energy. Blue means next to no energy. When they collided, the blue molecule gained some molecular motion and the, the hot molecule lost some molecular motion. Okay, and what they'll do is they'll fly apart from each other, just like billiard bar balls do on a billiard table. Okay, now it doesn't stop there, right? Because they're still bouncing around inside the box. And eventually they're going to collide again. And after many, many, many collisions, okay, you get to set this box aside and come back in 24 hours. After many collisions between the particles, these two particles will eventually have the exact same molecular motion. They will have the exact same energy. So really what happened is the energy that was, that was all contained in this uh, hot molecule is now split evenly between both of them. So that's why I use that purple color because purple is between red and blue, right? Cold and hot, so it's about a medium. That's basically what I was drawing right here, okay? If you give the, these two particles enough time, they both will have the exact same molecular motion. Energy is conserved, right? Energy does not disappear anywhere. It's not like energy came out of came out of somewhere. It was inside the red molecule, inside the hot molecule. It collided with the cold molecule. The red gave up some of its molecular motion. The blue one gained some molecular motion. And then after they collide millions of times, eventually they both have exactly the same molecular motion. So let's say we have two molecules separated by a thin sheet of metal atoms. So this could be any sort of metal. I don't really care. Let's just say it's iron or aluminum. It's like a, it's like a baking sheet for your cookies. How is heat going to transfer from one side to the other? Because in here there was no barrier. Okay. Now we have a barrier. Now, We've got to figure out how there's going to be molecular uh, molecular transfer of heat from one side to the other. Well, let's uh, let's examine it. Remember what I said: heat is transferred through molecular motion. So now, in this case, the red molecule has a lot of energy, and it's going to bounce into one of the metal atoms inside the barrier. Instead of bouncing directly to this molecule, it's this uh, low energy molecule. It's going to bounce to 
a molecule or an atom inside the, inside the metal barrier. And when it does so, it gives off some of its energy to one of the metal atoms. Okay, and that's what I showed here. It hits it, bounces off, and now one of the atoms inside atoms or molecules in the metal barrier now has more molecular motion than it did before. So now it's vibrating and moving all, all sorts of ways. Okay. Now, all we need is the low energy molecule to collide with that metal atom. And then it will steal the molecular motion for itself and it will become, uh, it will become a particle with higher energy. Remember, energy is conserved. It didn't go anywhere. It just got transferred. Energy never disappears and it is never created, okay? The red molecule has, has a lot of heat, transfers some of the heat to, the, to, to a metal atom. The blue, the blue molecule with low molecular motion comes along, steals it, and now they have the exact same molecular motion after many, many, many collisions. Okay, and that's basically the whole point of this lecture is in order to transfer heat, there must be molecular collisions and transfers of molecular motion, okay? So if you're gonna transfer heat from one place to another, you have to have a molecular collision which, which does that for you, okay? There's, there's classically, there are, there are some exceptions to this rule, especially when we talk about photons and inf uh, uh, infrared and ultraviolet. But right now, when I'm talking about matter, there's only one way matter can transfer uh, heat, and that's through a molecular collision. Let's think of another barrier. So we were looking at a metal barrier, but let's look at, let's look at a, a, um, a, a barrier of air. Okay, so it's like an empty box, but it has air particles in it. Okay, how is the heat going to be transferred in this scenario? Well, it's going to be the same thing. Okay. You've got to have a molecule come over and provide a collision, okay? So a, an air molecule comes over to the side of the box, and then one of the molecules with high energy comes over and collides with it, okay? And when it does so, the molecular, there is a transfer of energy or a transfer of molecular motion. <coughs> so notice, energy is still conserved. The energy in this frame is the exact same as the energy in this frame. It's just now it's been split between two molecules. Okay. Now, this molecule, this air molecule, uh, oxygen or argon or water or whatever it is, there's a whole bunch of molecules that are in the air. Whatever molecule it is, all it needs to do is come to the other side of the box and then we need to have the low energy molecule come over and collide with it. And when it does, it just steals the energy and takes it for itself on the other side. Okay, so yes, we can definitely have a transfer of of molecular motion through a um, through a barrier of air. It's actually just not as good. Okay, it's you're gonna we're gonna learn about insulators and conductors. Metals are very good conductors because the metals are sitting in place. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait for an air molecule to come to one side of the wall and then go to the other side like this. If you take a look at this, we have to make sure that one of these air molecules comes over, gets contacted, and then travels to the other side in order to transfer the energy. Okay, So air can conduct heat, but it's not very good at it. Now, we're going to turn and talk in class, but I want to ask you, think about what I just asked you. Energy, or what I just told you, energy is transferred through molecular motion. Just say that over and over and over again. Now I'm going to ask you this question. Can heat be transferred between a barrier of a vacuum? And if so, why? So remember what a vacuum is. I'm not talking about the vacuum that you use to clean your floor. Okay. A vacuum is an area of space that has little to no atoms or molecules in it. Okay. So it's just a box but it's completely empty. It doesn't have molecules, it doesn't have anything in it, okay? Outer space is a vacuum. There's like one molecule per cubic meter or something like that. It's ridiculously tiny. It's, it's basically no molecules in space. Okay, so can heat be transferred? 
Answer the question. Think about it. If there's no molecules to, to provide the molecular transfer of heat, of molecular motion, then there cannot be a transfer of energy, okay? So these molecules are just gonna sit there and bounce up against this wall and never actually meet each other, and they'll never ever be able to transfer energy between each other. Why? Because there's no molecules inside of this barrier in order to do so, in order to transfer the heat. If there's no molecules, there's, there can be no transfer of molecular motion. Okay, so they'll just, they'll just bounce off the walls and continue doing what they're doing. Okay, so let's think of another example. Let's say we have a very hot block of iron enclosed in a vacuum chamber. Okay, so this, this red block is uh, the iron, super hot, and then it's enclosed in this box that has, um, that has a vacuum. There's literally no molecules in this space right here. So the temperature inside the chamber is about 1,000 degrees Celsius, okay? After two hours, what will the temperature of the iron block be? Sorry, there's a typo there, block. What will the temperature of the iron block be? You know that there can be no exchange of energy between the interior of the of the chamber and the outside so it makes sense that the temperature should be about the same the temperature is, is going to stay the same at a thousand degrees Celsius which means no heat or no molecular collisions occurred so no heat was lost okay there's no molecules inside this vacuum Okay, so there's no molecules to exchange the molecular motion through molecular collisions in order to get heat or energy from inside to outside. Okay, so which is the best conductor of heat in all the choices below and which is the best insulator of heat? Okay, so a conductor, I mean, we'll write this down. Uh, let's put heat conductor. What are heat conductors? They exchange heat through molecular motion very well. What are heat Insulators, heat, insulators, they're just the opposite. They exchange heat very poorly. Okay, well, what would be the best conductor? What could exchange heat the absolute best? We already saw it, the metals. Metals and solids in general are very, very good heat conductors, okay? And the reason is because of their structure. They're, they have very tightly packed atoms in, of, of, or molecules that are tightly packed together. And they're, they're, they're very easily um, excited and uh, very easily able to transfer energy to other molecules. Air is not a good conductor of heat. Why? Because these molecules are sitting there bouncing around and in order, in order for there to be a transfer of energy from one uh, molecule on one side to the other, you have to have a perfect bounce of one air molecule coming up to the side and we can actually just, we can actually go back if you want. We have to have a air molecule bounce over to one side perfectly collide and then transfer way over to the other side to give the molecular motion to the other side. Okay, this takes time. This takes a lot of time, especially uh, compared to a metal. Metals are much better heat conductors. Okay, and the best insulator says that exchange, basically what I'm saying is which exchange heat very poorly? It would be this one. Vacuums exchange heat incredibly poorly. Why? Because they do not have mo molecules that, that can be used to transfer energy through molecular motion. Now, here's another question. Are liquids or gases better at conducting heat? Okay, so go back. What's a heat conductor? 
A heat conductor is something that exchanges heat through molecular motion very well. Which is going to be better at conducting heat, gas or a liquid? Okay, and the answer is liquids. Liquids have a boatload of particles close together. It's kind of actually the same reason why solids and metals are, solid metals are very good heat conductors. They have a lot of particles close together, so they exchange heat really, really well. Okay? So just think about it. If you've got one molecule that gets excited, it can easily pass that energy to another molecule, and then another molecule, then another molecule. It's kind of like a, it's like a chain reaction, right? In a gas... The gases are, gas molecules are very spread apart, okay? So it's very difficult for gas molecules to transfer heat energy because they're, sp they're spread out so far and they have to collide with each other, which is much, much more rare um, compared to molecules or atoms inside of a liquid, okay? So that's what's gonna happen here. The, the, there's a barrier in between these two molecules of liquid it bounces up, the high energy molecule bounces up, gives its energy to one of the liquid molecules, and then the liquid, the, the energy passes from one liquid molecule to another until it eventually collides with the other side of the barrier and then transfers the molecular energy to the other side. Okay. So I want you to think about heat conductors, a, a liquid being a heat conductor, okay? So go for a swim in the lake. You're eventually going to get pretty darn cold. And why is that? Because the water is a very, very good heat conductor and it will draw heat away from your body. So what water is really doing is it's stealing molecular motion away from the molecules that make up your body. Your mo you, you have molecules in your body, right? That's, you're made of atoms, so you're made of molecules. And those molecules have molecular motion. And when the molecular motion decreases, you feel it as cold. That's what you say is, oh, I feel cold. Well, that's because the molecular motion of the molecules making of your body has decreased. So what you're doing is when you're going into a heat conductor, like a liquid, the molecules are literally bouncing up, up against your skin and stealing the molecular motion from your body. Energy is conserved. Energy didn't disappear. You're getting colder, but the lake is getting hotter. Okay? All right, cool, guys. I hope this is making a little bit more sense. Um, take your exit ticket. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.